Oh shit, we're on. Uh, ha. Come on in. <laughs> it's the perfect way to end an imperfect week. It's the perfect way to end an imperfect week. It's East Nashville Happy Hour with our very special guest, Patrick Sweeney. There he is. Right on the wings of the angels of love who are on our side. It's the perfect way. Friday music fans, it's East Nashville Happy Hour. Happy Friday, everybody. I feel so much better now. Welcome to E. Oh. Mm. This is the Orb of Truth. Orb of Truth. As uh, uh, titled by uh, Terry Rickards, mm -hmm. who, by the way, we could start off right now uh, with this. You know, we, we have a, a questionnaire later on, uh, where we ask someone who uh, is the most underrated artist, in their opinion, in, in the world, ever, mm. they could be dead or alive. And we had Terry Rickards on, and he said Patrick Sweeney. This is Patrick Sweeney, by the way. Hello. And I was like, oh, that's cool, because I was going to ask you local, too. So, you know, you don't have to go local right away. You can just, you can do like a... Some, a big artist, you know, like a classic artist or whoever you think might be the most. And he's just, no, 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 no. Wow, well, that's Patrick really nice Sweeney. of Terry. He doesn't know what he's talking about, but obviously <laughs> that's, that's he must readily know something. to anyone who knows him. But yeah, it's a very nice thing to say, sure. Let me take a tender moment and just uh, ruin that. Leave a tender moment. Is that, is that's, that a song? That's Bill, yeah, leave a tender moment alone. Yeah. Billy Joel. Billy Joel. You, yeah. like, you like Billy Joel? You know, I mean, I go hot and cold on him, but like, honestly, a body work, pretty great. Come ah. on, like for the longest time, you know, I mean, even that's straight do up, but it's perfectly done, you know. And he quit after a while. He's like, you know what, I'm probably not going to be able to do any yeah, better than this. I so. respect, yeah. River you know? Dreams is about what I can do. So. And that's his last. And that was his that's last. his last, yeah, yeah. real pop. Yeah. So when are you going to quit? <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, like, you know, it's, it's easy to quit when you don't have to, you know? <laughs> like, right. We're going to make a little history. I feel strongly, man, it's hot in here. I feel strongly that we're going to make a little history here with Patrick Sweeney. It's on drugs. It's not drugs. <laughs> I mean, I don't consider I what I'm on drugs. Right. Most, I mean, the authorities no, do, just, yes. I was but, just kidding. Uh, I was looking at your uh, Wikipedia and... Uh, by the way, S W E A N Y. Do not put That's that right. One e. second E in there. Um, it says you were born in April 1974. That is correct. Therefore, you are age 42 to 43. It says right. 42 <laughs> to 43. So today, Ish. I would like. I'm going to hit the little edit button. What oh, day? Really? What yeah. day of April were you born in 1974? That would be April 26th. So you are currently 42. Two years old. That's right. I'm not logged in. Nah, edit without logging in. I mean, he's standing right here in Wait, Wikipedia. Wait, you can edit right. Wikipedia? I'm going to edit it right fucking here. I want to switch to visual yeah, editing. Uh, I know this, this is a is gimmick, a but... This is podcasting, too. This is going to affect people's lives. Yeah, that's April? correct. term papers. That's right. Now, yeah. If your kid is writing a term paper on this, you need... Get in that kid's life. Okay, I don't know how to do this on my direction. phone. Oh wait! <laughs> and get him out of whatever he's in. This is not a good sign if your kids are into this. All right. Well, I can't figure this out right now, but I'm gonna yeah. edit. Well, I'm gonna let's edit. Get it. For effort. Let's go. Let's get April around. Good man. Hey. Twenty-six. They were correct that he was forty-two to forty-three, and we're gonna go ahead and say That's he's right. forty-two. I am forty-two right now. to forty-three. Also, it says. See, I I heard perhaps it was. Because of your association with Dan Auerbach, which we can mm -hmm. talk about. But I heard that you were from Akron. 
Uh, I grew up in a little town called Masson. It's about like, uh, well, it's not a real little town, but I mean, it's like, it's about 20 minutes south right. of Akron. And then you go on your website and it, you t- they talk about, your bio talks about Kent. Yeah, I went to school at Kent State. and uh, So I thought Akron, and, and, and then, I th- then I thought Kent, and then I saw on Wikipedia Maslin. So let's get this figured out for sure. You were yeah. born in Maslin. Born and we're in gonna Maslin. Do, we're going to do our, our segment called Map It Out. I like Map that. It Out. It's and then we do a little globe thingy, segment. and it's all oh, the technology is amazing. Mm-hmm. Born in Maslin, Ohio. That's right. Went, went to college at Kent State University. Graduated from Kent State University. So Maslin. You know, it's to six Kent. and a half short years. And uh, <laughs> and then I moved to Eureka Springs, Arkansas, for a couple of years. Yeah. That's a, a child. definitely have enduring connection with that. Moved back to Kent, lived there for a couple more years. Uh, moved at but played in the Akron area. Lived in Akron and then moved to uh, Nashville. Yes, East Side for life, y'all. Excelente. I, I, I didn't know the Arkansas part. You said you had a you had a, a strong connection. How I do well. My wife is from there. Oh. Um, uh, when we started dating, her mom was the mayor of Eureka Springs. Oh, really? That was, yeah, so, which was terrifying. So I was touring for an entire winter for the first time in my life. And uh, so, you know, I was making money. But then the next year I wasn't touring and uh, trying to live there. and was just, you know, went broke. And it was like, I got to get serious. I got to move back to Ohio, put a band together and make some records and that was the wrong decision I made. Now here you see me. <laughs> Threw it all away. It's going to be the same. Super hot on spray paint right now. So I'm <laughs> totally good. Was there a time after college maybe? Or maybe it was earlier where you decided, I am going to play music. I'm going to get really damn good at music. And this is going to be a huge part of my life. Maybe you didn't decide, you know, I'm going to throw everything else away and do it. But... Was there a, a moment, a piece of music you heard, a, a concert? Right from the start, I knew it was what I wanted to do. Like, you know, 11, 12 years old, like, this is what's cool. I want to do this, you know. And I was just listening to my dad's folk records and things, and then I heard Lightning Hopkins and all this stuff. I'm How like, old were you when that happened? Like, I guess here in Lightning Hopkins, I was probably about 14, I'm guessing. And like, and that, that was just like, this is out of control. Lucky. This is different than anything else and this yeah. is cooler than anything else and just you know you'd see a picture of him on a record or a tape or something at that age like, I was just... thinking the exact same thing about poison <laughs> right well this was all secret like because right. this wasn't cool and like you know right. like going to school like everyone was into like you know poison you know I mean I thought Metallica was cool and I didn't know I didn't know a lot about other kinds of music is it pretty accurate to put blues number one genre wise and in, in what you do is that no. fair no, because I, man, it's. I saw. I read on on the website that you're. We're going to talk about a, a new album coming soon. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully, it says funky rock and roll and blues. Yeah, you know, I definitely would never describe myself as we're a blues band. You know, like because yeah. we we're a rock and roll band. Of course, blues things are the primary influence, but there's a lot of different kinds of that stuff that is the primary influence. You know, there's the Charlie Patton thing and then there's Bobby Blue Band just as much, you know, and the Lightning Hopkins thing and the, you know, like soul singers and things like that, like that, that are really influenced, you know, me. So I would, you know, when you put all that much stuff together, it's, it's rock and roll. Early on, the, your earlier albums though, were definitely blues guitar, blues rock guitar, yeah. Was a huge part of it. and then Well, the, yeah, it still is. I mean, it still is. Still is, especially yeah. in your live show. But the last album w- was a bit of a departure from, from what I could tell. A little bit more understated, maybe even right. maybe even more focused on, on the song structures. And you're a great singer. Oh, it's a great singer. Thank you. But it seemed like the focus was a little bit more on delivering the... The lyric and the vocal. I don't know if that's fair. But. No, no, that's, that's, that's by design. You know, it was yeah. more of, 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 let's chill out. You've hollered at people for, you know, in a, you know, for three albums in a row. You know, you've got to show this other thing that you do. And it's something that, you know, that I'll, you know, do in the live set as well. You know, you want to break it down and, and, you know, croon it out. You've got to, you've got to, I have to change it up, you know. Well, with that in mind, then what's this new album that's coming going to sound like? Well, it's it's definitely we did it in Memphis at uh, Sam Phillips recording, and uh, Matt Ross Bang produced it, and uh, oh, yeah, so he's on a roll. He really is. He's doing he's doing pretty good, but uh, 
he's into a lot of what I'm into and being, he's a real funky Memphis boy. And, uh, you know, and after doing three records, you know, with the same producer, I'm like, it definitely, it's time to make a change. Jimmy Iovine, I think said that in the super mensch movie. He said, Oh, I three. Seen that yet. It's the it's how have you it. of all people oh, not seen Super I know. I know. That's like me being it's like super rock nerd like, Bible. Like that's like I, it's, it's amazing. It's at the top of my Netflix list. All right. right yeah. <laughs> Just, it's been up there for like three years. Yeah, but no, I really. But he said it. after three albums you should change. And I thought you know what that's that's right. Yeah. So and then the opportunity to, to work with Matt, we'd worked on uh, we did a PBS taping at Sun. Uh, a few years ago that he was the engineer for and we just got to be like you know just all of a sudden we're like wait a second you know we're pals now and the little hearts, and the little exa- hearts came out exactly so we just <laughs> said we got to work together we got to work together and I thought man I'd do the next record Memphis that'd be cool and he said well I'm working out of with the Phillips family and working with at Phillips Recording which is his studio that Sam Phillips built when he sold Elvis's contract and used that money for the stake money for the million dollar loan that he got to build this facility, which is, it's the greatest place on earth. <laughs> and it's a throwback, but I mean, this the room is amazing and everything in it is, 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 you know, like where light bulbs are placed in the echo chamber. Like our, there's a reason for that, that Sam yep. put it there. So he could, you know, I was talking to the assistant uh, engineer, at Wesley Graham. He said, I think I figured it out that Sam put the light bulbs where to aim the microphone for certain sweet spots in the echo chamber. Like, it's crazy. I had Ken Coomer on drums, who's nice. oh. a, a brilliant musician. Ted Pecchio on bass, who is sort of, you know, like we, we played together years and years ago and playing together again. He's a brilliant, the grooviest bass player, especially for me, you know, like really him and I have a lot of chemistry. And then uh, for a few days, we had Charles Hodges from the high rhythm section playing keys. We played on all the Al Green records and all the Ooh. and people. So like all oh, that. So and he was oh man a ocean of like creativity and spirituality that just like blew our minds. <laughs> and that's why Matt's a brilliant producer because like I definitely could have gotten completely just bowled over by that because he was into grooving too. He's like, what's the riff? And we'd work on it. And then Charles would just... You know, we'd play it, and then, like, Charles would find his groove, and we'd, you know, he wouldn't move, and we'd sort of get into it. But, I mean, the guy, you know. You were fine with uh, I was fine with lead. most of that, but then, like, <laughs> Matt's like, oh, you make sure you, you know, he would always make sure that I'm into it and comfortable and stuff like that. He's like, yeah. this is your record, you know, don't get. But I'm also pretty, you know, a, you know I'm not a shy person. And uh, <laughs> I, I don't usually have a problem telling people what's on my mind. It was nice having that that level of musicianship in the room where guys could tell each other. Like, I remember when Charles told Ken to do this thing on the hi-hat, and none of us were into it. But when we heard it, heard the playback, we're like, Ooh. that's the part. It's a part, you know, like that. Wow. Like So it's like, so... Nice yeah, it's because like, cool but stuff. nobody, like, Matt wasn't, Ken wasn't. Ted wasn't, and I was like, oh no, man. You know, I'm not trying to be the one that like tips his hand and being like, I don't dig it. Yeah. And then we heard the playback, and we're just like, Whoa. isn't that crazy? How it's that crazy. Magic making records happens. is the best thing in the world. It and really making is. records at Phillips Recording is the great. It's like the Santa's best of the best. The best of the best. It's the most comfortable, like, creative place I've ever been. And did you do it with all those same guys? Are they on every song, yeah, yeah. pretty much? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Charles isn't on everything, and right. then um, uh, but it's yeah, it's definitely the three of us. I did, you know, I think almost all the guitars. You know, Matt played some nylon string guitar and some percussion, you know, hit Billy bongos and stuff like that. And did a bunch of percussion stuff. A lot of the basics, uh, though, were live. You did it oh, live. right off the floor, right off the floor. Yeah, that's that's actually one of the songs off there is the mix off the floor like we've a beat it like and that's just it Boop, done, yep. done you know there's some real hollering and but there's also some parts where we need to go really back you know and sort of you know do there's a lot of really funky groove stuff like let's say it's a memphis record there's not like horns on it or anything right. like that but like there's definitely some down uh, some down tempo or even you know like medium tempo kind of really almost new orleansy kind of funky kind of grooves yeah. like early meters kind of 
kind of stuff. It sounds like the city Early had... parliament. Like, Ooh. yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the city had kind of a, a hand in the personality. Oh, without a record. doubt. Without a doubt. But, you know, when I, I make a record, I like basically just shut my life off mm. for about six weeks and just, you know, get all the notes and everything and then construct it. Like, get all the notes together and write the term paper. But right. uh, whereas do this and like, well, just so there's some cohesion, I think, like that, because it's really easy to have a song here and a song there. But when you're trying to make an album, you want it to be, you know, you want the story to flow. Again, I don't want to get too, you know, no, I mean, technical on this thing. I guess, you know, it's, I most, love it's mostly our friends who we would be talking about anyway. <laughs> I love the uh, fact that you're still doing friggin' full length albums, to be honest, stuff. you know. Yeah, I mean, it's it's the only, it's, I'm the antique. But this is the good shit. Don't edit yeah. that shit. Oh, I'm, yeah, sitting okay. here, I'm sitting here silently because I'm just like, oh, yeah. you know, soaking it all <laughs> right. in. But so you're kind of the eye candy. What with the hat? Yeah, I don't know if good. you can tell, but I sit here and look good. fuck me, I'm sweating my yeah. balls off. It's a, I mean, wow. mainly it's Patrick yeah, making me nervous and, yeah. and intimidating. Yeah, we try to uh, recreate the old Sun Street or like, yes. you know, yeah. sweltering Memphis heat. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Uh, what the hell else did I want to ask? I don't know. That's a lot of good stuff. Well, right on. Yeah, I guess we sort of bowled over the... <laughs> the questionnaire or whatever. Oh, no, we're oh, not okay. done with oh, okay, okay, okay. Oh, no, 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 we're not done with that shit. We'll get that yeah. in. Let's get yeah. that in. So we're going to go over to uh, the couch and play some music. Well, we're going to listen to some music. You're going to play some music. Sounds great. Awesome. Okay, and then I, do we need this? I, this is the editing Oh, sure. Thing. Yeah. I mean, you guys went to all the, all the trouble. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. yeah. Blue. I wore my Ohio State shirt. For our Ohio guest. This move to the couch this week is not at all sponsored by Tito's Vodka. Because we had to pay them. They didn't have to pay us. So it's not really sponsored by, but it was fueled by little Tito's Vodka. And what kind of coffee did we have, Jay? Oh, this, oh man, Barissimo. Barissimo. (laughs) Barissimo. And then, of course, a little Bailey's was thrown in there. A little Bailey's. We'll get some Bailey's involved. Anyway, that's that's the move to the couch. Thank you, everybody. Okay, bye-bye. Now. Patrick Sweeney, everybody. All right. This is one off the latest record uh, that is currently out. Off of daytime turns to nighttime. This is called Here to Stay. to hide it, things will get ugly as discount vinyl side in, set in blue, set in blue, though my pockets feel the shallow mistakes are getting higher, feeling my feet getting closer to the fire, my bills are due, my bills are due. Well, I heard it roaring like heavy metal thunder Cracking from the feeling, the pressure that I'm under Just like you, baby, just like you Rock and roll is here to stay Rock and roll is here Money seemed to fall out. Shoe do. Monkey do. Lord, my eyes are getting tired. Oh, my knees are getting weaker. I can still shake it when it's coming out the speakers. It's what I do. 
what I do Rock and roll is here to stay Rock and roll is here to stay Rock and roll is here to stay And I know my time ain't long Tied low, my knees are getting weaker. I can still shake it when it's coming out the speakers. What I do is play them blues, play the blues. Rock and roll is here to stay. I kind of screwed up the last verse, but I. Yeah. <laughs> we were still mesmerized by yeah, the solo, man. so we that just went right. Uh, I don't think I ever knew that about you, Jay. I did. Was it an Ibanez? Wow. Well, I no, it was it's a Kramer. It was um, a Kramer, yeah. and uh, <laughs> I. Of course, I, it was. I still had it in high Somewhere, school. Michael Schenker is waking up saying, "Where is my guitar?" It's like. I no. can't beat that. I'm done. No, oh, yellow no, Kramer. No, no, Come no, on. No, no, no. 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 Well, in a high school, yellow, in high school, how I, yellow? In high, the, shocking me on <clears throat> chartreuse is the color, right? Is that the color? Yeah, that's like fuchsia. green. Oh, fuchsia. Yeah. yeah, chartreuse. It's like that. Yeah, fuchsia is red. Pink I don't know, red. man. It's like one of those French colors. So anyway, I ah. decided to tape it um, and white and put little black polka dots on it kind of modeling it after Rick Nielsen's guitar in the Don't oh. Be Cruel video. Oh, well, there's nothing wrong with that. Ooh, now we're now it we're, just yeah. looked a mess. Oh, yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. totally you correct. It. So that's what I did. Correct. It's still around, that thing. I had a lavender Yamaha. Wow. See, my dad was, like, not cool with me getting, like, the... Like, I wanted that... <laughs> the lavender sparkle double neck PV that the guy from Alabama played. And I always thought Ooh. that was the coolest. And my dad was like... No way. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh, I was like, but it has a 12 string. And my dad was into 12 strings and stuff too. So I was like, and Not I enough. was like, dude, it's the best. And he was like, Not no way. He knew. He was a wise man. So long, folks. And thanks, Harry. See you next episode, everybody. Bye. Bye.